Hi everyone and welcome to the All Together Celebration event from the, for the Anti-Bullying Alliance. My name is Bethan and I am co-chairing today's event with my friends Zach, um, Eze and Demetrius. And we were part of the All Together's group of young people who supported the programme this year. We are going to be chairing today's event, like I said, which is all about celebrating the amazing work that the schools have done on the All Together programme. Um, so just some quick housekeeping. First, as many people have already done, if you're happy to introduce yourselves, please do pop your name and organisation into the chat and say hi to us. We will also have some live and pre-recorded presentations. Please add your comments and questions to the live chat feed throughout the event because we would absolutely love to hear your thoughts. We will also have a Q&A answer panel session at the end. We're delighted to be joined by some amazing speakers, including the Minister responsible for for presenting video, preventing bullying, Vicky Ford MP. So please do add any questions that you might have into the chat and we will try and put them to the panel later. And if you could also include who your question is for, that would be amazing. Um, we will also be sharing the presentation and our full all together event um, summary report with you following this event. And we are also recording this session and it's going to be available on YouTube later this week the chat feed will not be visible within the recording. Right, without further ado, we would like to kick off the event with this special video about the work of All Together from the Anti-Bullying Alliance's patron, Andy Day. Hi everyone, I'm Andy Day from Children's TV from Andy and the Odd Socks. I'm a patron for the Anti-Bullying Alliance and I'm going to tell you a little bit about their groundbreaking programme, All Together. All Together is an anti-bullying programme launched in April of 2017. It aims to deliver a supportive whole school anti-bullying programme to schools in England, provide CPD training to school staff and the wider children's workforce, and offer information and advice to parents and carers. It especially focuses those most at risk of being bullied, including disabled pupils and those with SEN, who research shows are twice as likely to be bullied in school. Young people, including disabled young people, were involved in developing materials throughout the programme. Schools that wanted to become altogether schools were provided with an online pupil wellbeing questionnaire, to help schools understand levels of bullying and well-being in their school, an audit tool to help them appreciate the strengths and weaknesses of their current anti-bullying practice, and a tailored action plan accompanied by lots of new tools and CPD training to help them make the changes they needed in their schools. ABA also promoted the wealth of resources already available from across the anti-bullying sector. 1,200 schools took part in the All Together School programme and of those schools over 550 went on to be given an All Together School award. These schools went above and beyond to evidence their activity to improve the well-being of pupils and reduce bullying. They also provided case studies and examples to help inspire other schools. We were delighted to share our success in achieving the ABA Gold Award. The award is obviously a perk, but what it represents is the considerations, the effort, planning and hard work from staff and pupils that goes into tackling bullying. The Pupil Wellbeing Questionnaire was filled in over 93,000 times by pupils over the course of the program. This, along with the school audits, have given incredible insight into anti-bullying practice and has helped ABA and their evaluators understand the impact of the changes schools made. As well as establishing all together schools, ABA, with the support from Partners Achievement for All, delivered face-to-face -face CPD training to over 2,400 school staff 
and children's workforce professionals. ABA's online CPD courses were accessed over an amazing 57,000 times. I'd say that the impact of the All Together programme, really, it's affected our whole community. So the children are far more aware of all of the issues that we've been working on through their questionnaire at the beginning and end of the programme. Providing support and advice to parents and carers was an integral part of All Together. The All Together online interactive anti-bullying tool for parents and carers was accessed over 25,000 times. Altogether Partners Contact have provided helpline support to almost 500 parents and carers of children with SEND about bullying. It is hoped that the case studies and materials from the Altogether program will continue to inspire other schools to make whole school anti-bullying change that especially focuses on those most at risk of being bullied. Give one piece of advice to anyone that was embarking on using the anti-bullying website. I would say that you need to involve everyone, so everyone in the whole process. That everybody can take part and drive the project forward. You can't just be a one-man band. And one of the things that we pride ourselves at our school is working as a team. And that's what meant that, the, that this project for us has been such a success. To end, I just want to say a huge congratulations to all the All Together schools that have worked really hard to implement strategies to reduce bullying for all children, but especially for kids with SEND. These last 12 months have been incredibly difficult for schools and your commitment to see this vital anti-bullying work through has been amazing. So thank you very much. And we can't wait to see you for Odd Socks Day for this year's Anti-Bullying Week. Thank you. Yes, we want to say a massive thank you to Andy Day and to all the schools that took part in this video and that we hope that you all enjoyed the video. Um, joining us now from Maiden Early School is Stephanie Bendel, who will tell us all about her school's journey on the All Together programme. Okay. Thank you very much. So yes, I'm Stephanie Bendel. Um, I'm a senior assistant head teacher at Maiden Early School. Um, we're based just outside Reading. Um, we're a large um, secondary co-educational and um, comprehensive. We've got just over 1800 students on the school site from year seven up to sixth form. Um, and we have a very wide range. We've got about 25% um, English as an additional language. We've got a large special educational needs cohort. Um, we've got low pupil premium. So we've got a whole range at the school. Um, we joined uh, the All Together programme two years ago when we wanted to relaunch our target bullying programme. Um, we found it really useful to be able to kind of baseline where we were at that particular point in time. And using the tools that were given to us, we were then able to come up with an action plan and then move forward with implementing that. Um, during the second year on the All Together programme, we made use of the wellbeing questionnaire and that really helped us to focus on some key areas, particularly special educational needs. Um, we looked at our male versus female cohort and gender identity as well as a whole, and also how our free school meal students felt. And we've been able to plan some specific interventions around that and then repeat the questionnaire and look at the impact that that has. Um, at the very beginning, we kind of went back to basics. We very much um, looked at the documents and the people. Um, I head up the programme as a whole from the school, so there's a single person responsible. Um, we made sure that all of our policies contained everything that they should that we had lots of anti-bullying posters around school. We got the students to design a new logo and that's painted in our corridors. 
And um, we've also got anti-bullying email addresses and, and guides so that people can report um, bullying nice and easily to us so that we can intervene. Um, we made sure it was on our governor's agenda every single um, meeting um, and also as part of our school improvement plan. Um, we then moved on to the data. So we had a look at our uh, information reporting system and made sure that we were breaking down all the different categories of bullying um, so that we could actively look for any trends and then obviously proactively intervene with those. Um, we also review those ed trends, although be them small now, with the head teacher and the senior leadership team every half term. Um, we've raised the profile, obviously um, celebrating Anti-Bullying Week, uh, which has been great. We've had flash mobs and we've really enjoyed those weeks and raising the profile. But we use our TV screens around school. Um, we have assemblies to every year group at least twice a year as a minimum. Um, and we really are linked in with our safeguarding team to understand, um, you know, the impact of bullying as well. Um, we've been very clear and honest with our communications to parents. Um, we've basically set out our expectations about how we want people to treat each other in the school. And that's not just the students to each other, but that's the teachers and the parents as well. Um, we've been honest with them. Occasionally bullying does happen, but we've been honest with them about how we're going to deal with it um, and um, what proactive measures we're going to be put in place. And we're really important to listen to the student voice on that one. Um, so we did have some specific focus areas. We have focused on special educational needs and we've completed training for our staff on equality and bias. Um, we've looked, we've raised the profile of special education needs awareness for both students and the teaching staff. We've got our top tips every single week about anti-bullying and special educational needs. Um, we focused on the One Punch Kills uh, campaign and also the This Morning Be Kind campaign as well, which is really good for some appropriate um, clips to play to your students. Um, Next one, we've listened to our parent voice and student council. And what's been really, really good to hear, our young carers told us what a great job we were doing, um, which was really nice. And it meant that we could focus on something else. Um, and and um, we focused on, on some of the things our parents were telling us and our student council focused, so we could be focusing in the right direction. Uh, we focused very much on the perpetrator. We told the students that. We told them that we would look at the bully um, and that we would meet with their parents. Uh, we'd understand why they were bullying. And as well as thinking about implementing the school behaviour policy, we'd also get them to do some education and some reflection and counselling. And we found that that has been a really, really important thing to do using the counsellors and the youth workers. Next one. There we go. What's the impact? Well, ultimately, at the moment, we've got really low rates of bullying. We've got less than 10 cases per year. We've got really positive feedback in our student and parent survey, and we're able to focus on, on individual cases and then look, um, look ahead as to how we can prevent bullying even more. So we're looking at the impact of COVID at the moment on online safety and perhaps cyberbullying and also the return to school expectations. We don't want arguments from social media and gaming spilling over into the classroom. Um, so yes, we've done lots more online safety work. And we're also, we've got over 80 students in our school with autism. So we're going to implement an autism awareness programme and do some parent outreach work. And we are looking at our ABA wellbeing questionnaire outcomes to inform our school improvement plan for next year. So finally, make sure that the basics are in place first of all. Make sure it's really high profile every parent evening, lots of big paintings of logo, get the students involved in those flash mobs and anything else. Really, really listen to that, to the pupils voices in the questionnaire and then that allows you to focus on specific areas and move forward. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Stephanie. That was a really interesting presentation. Yeah. Stephanie will be on the panel later to answer any questions that anyone may have. So please stay till the end. Thank you. So next, we're going to hear how Cottage Grove School and Altogether Gold School uh, use the programme to make anti-bullying changes in their school by working with their pupils. Cottage Grove Primary School is a primary school with an on-site nursery. We cater for children between the ages of two and 11. We are in the heart of Portsmouth. We have over 30 languages spoken in our school, making us incredibly diverse. Over half of our children have English as an additional language. We have a higher than normal proportion of children with SEND. We were awarded the gold status by the Anti-Bullying Alliance for all of our work that we'd put towards anti bullying uh, gave us the tools to create an action plan to look at what we had in place already. We had a child-led initiative to give them that responsibility. They are building those relationships with each other. One of the big things we did was update our anti-bullying policy. It showed clearly then to all members of staff and governors um, what we were doing as a school, what we defined as bullying, how we were going to tackle that how we were going to support children who had been bullied, but also how to educate the children who were showing those bullying behaviours. At Cottage Grove, we believe that the, rather than a punitive approach to behaviour, that by supporting children um, to understand the impact of their behaviour on others, that they begin to develop empathy and skills to solve conflicts that will last them throughout their lives. We think that restorative champions are important in our school because they solve the conflicts that happen in school and they comfort um, children uh, as well as giving people who aren't as confident a voice. With our open door policy we find that that encourages our children to really voice how they're feeling. If they are not feeling that they can then they will feel that they are not in a trusting environment. They're not going to open up which means that you won't have that relationship with them that allows them to come to you if they have worries and concerns or if they're being bullied. We have noticed by using a restorative approach that the children um, are able to resolve conflicts more easily, um, there are less minor conflicts and the children have developed buy-in as they've been able to come up with their own solutions. Everybody's involved in our restorative approach. We couldn't do it without each other. We had to work as a team. We also had meetings to talk about the conflicts that were happening. We met with adults to discuss these. It's about having that clear communication with each other as adults, clear communication with the children, clear expectations and a consistency in your bullying and behaviours that are not needed in school. When we followed up on the original questionnaire with the children, we found that their responses actually showed huge improvement in their happiness in school and also their feeling of being safe. We had fewer incidents of bullying being reported because actually our children had a real clear understanding of what bullying was. The most important thing that came from taking part in the Altogether programme was that it made us review so much that we came together as a team and we decided as a whole, this is what we were going to do moving forward. Thank you very much to Cottage Grove School for sharing their journey throughout the programme. Um, so next, I am very pleased uh, to introduce uh, Professor Peter Smith from Goldsmiths University, one of the world's leading experts in bullying research, uh, who has worked uh, tirelessly on the evaluation of the Altogether programme. Peter. Thank you very much. Just, yeah. So obviously it's important to have an evaluation of how successful the programme is and it's best to have an independent evaluation. I'm going to give some highlights. Obviously there's a lot of findings coming from the evaluation. I've only got 10-15 minutes. And this has been put together by myself and my colleagues Suzanne Robinson and Robert Slongy. Next slide. So what are the sources of evidence we've got to look at? And Andy Day mentions quite a few of these in the in the video earlier. We've got the pupil bullying and well-being questionnaire. So this is telling us what pupils think themselves. And it's got items about being bullied, 
such as I was excluded during lunch and break times. It's got items about taking part in bullying others, like I say bad things about other pupils when they aren't there. And it's got items about school experience generally, like I feel safe at school. And then later on, it's got a well-being questionnaire, not specifically about school, general well-being, like I have problems sleeping or I lose my temper often. Notice, by the way, these are negative wording, so it's kind of measuring negative well-being problems. There's the school audit survey, so information from the school leads. There's information from the children's workforce generally, and there's a parent information tool, there's feedback on that as well. So there's a variety of sources. Next slide. Now, there have been three phases of this programme. Again, as Andy Day mentioned, it started back in 2017, 2018. We were not involved then in evaluating. But we did evaluate phase two, which was 2019, 2020. And we've been evaluating this third phase, 222 to now, really. Now, obviously, this phase was greatly disrupted by the COVID pandemic. But still, we got quite a lot of data at time, what we call time one, that was between March and December 2020, a big span because of all the problems with COVID, the tier system, schools opening and closing at different times across the country and so on. But rather less at time two, which was mostly at the end of last year. There should have been about three months gap between time one and time two. So you're looking at sort of pre and post test. We also added in a questionnaire about how much COVID had impacted the school as well. Next slide. So just to remind you of some findings from the previous phase, and that was in Andy's video too. Phase two, there was a decrease in all the measures of victimization and bullying others between the two time points. So in other words, there's less victimization and bullying going on, which is great. And this decrease was especially strong for the SEND pupils too, which was also very encouraging because that's where the pro program is particularly focused. The well-being scores, the general well-being, they stayed rather constant, but improved actually for the SEND pupils. The school audit was an invaluable tool for schools, great feedback, and um, the training and resources offered by AV ABA was well received, very well received. Actually, we're going to get very similar findings from phase three, as you'll see in a moment. So next slide. This is just about numbers from this phase three, time one and two. Altogether, at time one, we got over 15,000 pupil responses from 111 schools. Fairly well split between male and female pupils. About one fifth were SEND pupils, about one quarter were three school meal pupils. Time two was less, understandably, but still we've got data from 25 schools and about 1,300 pupils. Next slide. So first I'm going to present some findings from the pupil well bullying and well-being questionnaire. And to start with, I'm going to include phase two as well as phase three. For each of them we've got time one and two. And we look at the victim scores, the bullying other scores, and the well-being scores. So next slide. Right, so this is pupils who've reported being victimized. This is a little or more, so really any kind of victim experience. On the left we got phase two, and on the right we got phase three, this current year. The blue is time one and the green is time two for each phase. So what you're seeing is a steady decrease actually. It's not huge, but it's going down 80%, 77%, 76%, 74% um, over the two phases and over the time points. Next slide. This is for frequent victim experiences. So if it's happening a lot or always. And again, we see this steady decrease, 27, 24, 21, 19. Next slide. Bullying others, a little or more. Steady decrease from 43, 38, and then 36, 36. And next slide, this is for bullying others a lot or always. Eight, five, five, four. So going down, steadily going down. And next slide. Now this is the well-being score. Now remember, these are negatively scored. It's negative well-being. So it's low scores are better. And here actually from phase two to phase three, it's got slightly worse. But that's not surprising, I think, 
given that this phase three data was all taken in the pandemic, and obviously that's affected all of us. I think it'd be pretty surprising actually if general well-being was improving during the pandemic. If we move to the next slide, this is my comments now on the data so far. I think it's very encouraging to see this slow but steady decline in the victim scores and the bullying other scores over four time points now. Um, it's not evident for the well-being scores. As I've suggested, that's probably because of the pandemic. But actually, that gives me more confidence, I think, in saying that it, there's a real decline in the, the victim and the bully scores. Because in other words, it's not just that at time two, we've been getting a particularly optimistic group of pupils responding. They're being honest, their well-being isn't quite as good now in the pandemic, but nevertheless, for these pupils, the victim and bully scores seem to have gone down. Um, it's a slow decline, but the well-being questionnaire isn't really very sensitive to change because it doesn't use a time reference period. It just asks, you know, how often have you been bullied, really? It doesn't say how often you've been bullied in the last term, for example, but just how often you've been bullied generally. So I think um, you wouldn't expect to get huge declines with that kind of questionnaire. And of course, the pandemic has created an unusual situation and the numbers are much lower at time two. So we've got to bear that in mind. OK, next slide. Um, now just looking at phase three. So this is this year's, this last year's data, but at time one and time two. I'll just give some data for victim scores for SEND and non-SEND and also some well-being scores. So next slide. So this is the, the victim scores for those who are SEND or not SEND. On the left-hand side, it's for the any victim, and on the right-hand side, it's for the frequent, frequently being victimized. Now we've got the declines there. We saw the decline earlier overall, but what you can see is that decline is substantially higher for the SEND pupils. It's higher for when they're ever being reporting being a victim, and it's higher when they're frequently reporting being a victim. And it's quite a substantial difference actually. So it's declining for everyone, but especially for the SEND pupils, which mirrors what was found in phase two and is very encouraging, I think. Next slide. Now these are the wellbeing scores. Remember, um, a low score is good. Um, just look at the send there. It's the third one along from the left. It's actually gone down from 0.66 to 0.63. What that means is slightly better well-being actually for the SEND pupils. Although for many of the others, it hasn't got better as we saw. Overall, it's got slightly worse. But for the SEND pupils, it does seem to slightly improve. So that's encouraging as well, I think. Now, I thought this was interesting too. This shows the well-being scores by victim status. So have you been ever victimized? No, is on the left. Ever victimized? Yes, in the middle and frequently victimized on the right. And it's not surprising, of course, but what you find is that pupils who say they've been victimized, their well-being generally is worse. Remember, higher scores are worse. And especially if you've been frequently victimized. But, you know, that just substantiates the impact, really, which we know that negative impact that being victimized has. Now, the next slide, I think, is also quite interesting because this is about the reports of bullying others. On the left, you haven't bullied others. In the middle, you have ever bullied others, and on the right, frequently. Rather the same sort of pattern, not quite so strong, but it's rather the same sort of pattern, that the more you've bullied others, the lower your well-being is. And that just, I think, brings home the point that it's very important to be concerned about helping the children who get involved in bullying others, just as we want to help those who have been victimized. Uh, okay, next slide. Now, we've got other sources of evidence for phase three, of course, apart from the pupil questionnaires. Uh, so data from the children's workforce, 113 participants took part in the webinar training and 96% said that they thought this had improved their understanding of effective principles of responding to bullying. A school leads training survey, 95% thought that the webinar had improved their understanding. The Parent Information Tool Survey, we've got 433, sorry, 436 parents and carers completed it, and 96%, 98% generally saying how they found this helpful, they would uh, recommend it to others, 
and they feel more confident as a result of using it. So all these very positive responses. And the next slide. And this is data from the schools themselves, the school audits. There's got a lot of data actually available. This is just a, a selection, but this is about school leadership and the graphs there, the bar charts, show the percentages of schools at time one and time two, which say they've achieved these things. So for example, um, if we look at the, um, the one second from bottom, the school has an action plan for anti-bullying activity that's regularly reviewed and updated. Only 34% of schools had that at the start, but 80 something percent said they had that by the second test. And the next slide. Um, this is about responding and intervention. Again, lots of positive changes here. So the top one, the school uses a range of interventions to respond to bullying, including work with the wider peer group. That's gone up from 58% to, I can't see it properly on my screen, but something like 80 something percent. Okay, and here's the final slide then, conclusions. So. It's been very interesting doing this, but obviously difficulties caused by the pandemic in gathering data and interpreting the findings as well. Um, but we do find this slow but steady decline in victim experience scores over four time points and in bullying other behaviours over four time points. And I think that's really very encouraging. And also these improvements are generally larger for the SEND pupils as we've seen, and that's also encouraging too. There's a slight increase in negative wellbeing scores since phase two. But I think that's to be expected in the circumstances of the pandemic. And nevertheless, well-being did improve slightly for the SEND pupils. And we've got very positive ratings from the webinar training and the parent information tool and the school audit data, as you've seen. So I think actually congratulations really to the Altogether team. They seem to be doing great work. And just as for phase two, I think on all the, despite the difficulties of the pandemic, we've got very encouraging findings coming from this phase three data. Thank you. Great, thank you very much, Peter, for your findings and for your presentation. It just goes to show the amazing work that the staff at uh, ABA have put into this all together program. Uh, Peter will be on our Q&A panel uh, later on, uh, so you will be able to put your questions to him then. Joining us now is Ms. Uh, Anna Hudson from Meadow Park School, who is going to tell us a bit uh, uh, about the work her school has done on the programme. Hi, thanks everyone. My name is Anna Hudson and I'm the Personal Development Lead at Meadow Park School. We are a pupil referral unit in Knowsley in Merseyside and we support young people aged between 5 and 16 who are experiencing difficulties in mainstream education due to medical, social, emotional or behavioural needs. Um, as a school, we are absolutely committed to creating a safe, nurturing and engaging environment that's bully free. Uh, we are a restorative practice school and it was really, really important to us this year to look at that practice and look at the personal development programme that Meadow Park has. As part of that, we conferenced with staff and students to identify key areas to work on throughout the year and one of the main areas that we decided to focus on was bullying and improving our anti-bullying programme. So as part of that we joined the All Together programme and that's really where our journey began. Um, similarly to lots of colleagues have told you we took part in um, the audit we went through the audit at first, just to kind of clarify what exact areas we needed to work on. Uh, we identified our priorities and we put those into the school development plan. Um, next slide, please. Our journey was a very interesting one, really. Uh, for ourselves, it's very important that we focused on the implementation 
of the anti-bullying programme and particularly going through each aspect of the All Together programme because we need to recognise that our children need additional support. We need to understand the journey that they've been on um, and their experiences. For some of our children, they might, may have experienced bullying or they may have bullied themselves. So it was very, very important to us where we were focusing on the implementation that we took those additional needs, those experiences into account. Um, we focused very much on how our students were feeling, how they were going to react to the conversations that we were having, and also thinking about what could be triggers for our students. Um, we discussed with them our anti-bullying approach, the events, the strategies that we were going to use, and we had lots and lots of positive feedback. When we were looking forward, about how to embed anti or the anti-bullying program into school and how to improve it. We had to think about accessibility. We had to think about the approaches that we were using. So for us, we used a lot of um, multi-sensory learning, lots of experiential things, um, lots of coming together as a school. That was really, really important for us to do that. Um, student voice is very important in our school as well. We worked closely with the junior leadership team who represent our students to look at each event, each strategy and check that that was having an impact for them, that they felt it was meaningful. Um, we evaluated everything that we did with the junior leadership team, which again was really, really important. We embedded lots of opportunities into everyday life at Meadow Park for students to discuss bullying, to explore the issues around bullying. That included our personal development programme, which is embedded into every single day, our form focus, our PSHE, our mentoring, our interventions. Every aspect of the school day was, was it informed our anti-bullying programme. Uh, next slide, please. And the next one after that, please. Thank you. So, the impacts of, our, of using the All Together programme and obviously working through our new anti-bullying programme was fantastic. 100% of our students said that they felt that they were able to identify a different types of bullying and that they knew who to come to and where to get support. We saw a huge improvement in our wellbeing and it was a really, really fantastic opportunity for our school. Moving forward, We've got lots and lots of things going to happen across the next year, the next two years. The sky's the limit for our children. Our children are very, very passionate about ensuring a bully-free environment at Meadow Park. They want to work in conjunction with other schools. They want to become ambassadors of anti-bullying. And they want to drive that message home that our school and other schools are positive learning environments that are bully-free. So it's been a fantastic opportunity for our students and for our school. And we are very, very proud that we've received the Gold Awards. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, uh, Anna, for your lovely presentation. It's always good. That was inspirational. And it's always good to hear uh, from a referral unit too. And now our next speaker is a very special guest which I'm delighted to welcome, Vicky Ford, uh, Minister of Children and Family, who is responsible for preventing bullying in schools. Welcome, Vicky Ford. Thank you so much, Zach. And it's really great to be with everybody here today. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Um, and as you know, the Department for Education has been really, really proud to have been partnering with the Anti-Bullying Alliance since 2016. And I'd really like to start by thanking everyone at the Anti-Bullying Alliance for all the hard work that they've put in into developing the All Together programme. And as you've heard today, the programme has been hugely successful in improving pupil well-being, reducing bullying, and particularly of groups dis disproportionately affected, such as those with special educational needs and disabilities. And it is really, really heartwarming to hear that schools report that they feel more confident in preventing and responding to bullying, that they have a better understanding of the 
principles that they can use to prevent and respond to bullying and that they have an improved understanding of bullying overall. And alongside all of that, schools are also reporting that bullying has um, reduced in their school and that behaviour and attendance has also improved. And those are amazing achievements. Anti-bullying is a top priority for the government because we know that bullying can have such a devastating impact on children and on their families as well. And we must make sure that none of us let up our efforts to tackle it, especially at this time, which is so difficult for so many children. Since 2016, we've put in over three and a half million pounds of funding through our anti-bullying grant programmes to various organisations, including the Anti-Bullying Alliance. And that has been to support schools in, in their efforts to tackle bullying and has been a huge range of different projects right across the spectrum. And following the successes of that, that programme, we're now going to be running a new procurement exercise to fund activity in the next year which will ensure that schools have the right support in place uh, to prevent bullying of pupils. And bullying, including cyberbullying, is unacceptable. It can have such a devastating impact, harm education, and have serious and lasting consequences for mental health. So we are committed to supporting schools and have put in place a range of measures to help them. For example, schools are legally required to have a behaviour policy with measures to prevent all forms of bullying. Um, the policy gives schools the freedom to best develop their own anti-bullying strategies um, and monitor the approaches that support that school best, but they are also held to account for this by Ofsted. Um, we know uh, from a huge amount of evidence that once you have good behaviour measures in place, children can learn more effectively and take a much better advantage of the world-class education that we have in the UK. And that is why we're also investing a further 10 million pounds in behaviour hubs. And this uh, programme of reform will enable schools and multi-academy trusts that have really exemplary behaviour cultures to work with partner schools and help raise the standards of those partners as well. Um, but we know that more children have also been spending time online, especially during the pandemic. I mean, it's been so important to be online uh, in this year, um, but um, there are online harms as well. So we've been bringing in legislation that helps protect children and young people against harmful behaviour online. We've published guidance to help schools teach their pupils how to stay safe online and provide them with the skills and knowledge that young people People need to make the best use of the online and digital way but in a safe and considered and respectful way and um, this year we will be bringing forward full legislation in the form of the online safety bill. Um, we know that bullying can also have a very serious impact on mental health um, children who are exposed to bullying are likely to experience higher rates of anxiety, depression, and even self-harm right into adulthood. And in the current context, many pupils are coming back to school, having experienced a huge range of adversity and trauma, including very sadly bereavement, anxiety, uh, concerns about welfare and safeguarding risks. And some children, particularly vulnerable groups, need additional support and access to services like educational psychologists, social workers and counsellors. We've put in a big range of measures to support these children, but also to support schools to identify any underlying issues arising as a result of the pandemic. Uh, and these issues could lead to behaviour issues and to bullying. Um, and that includes the £8 million that we invested in a programme called the Wellbeing for Education Return Scheme. And this funded um, experts and advisors and training in every local area to support well-being recovery as children and young people return to school and further education. And then we've recently announced another £79 million boost into young people's mental health support, including through faster rollout of our mental health support teams. And then 
we've uh, recently established a mental health in education action group um, to consider further how to support children and young people's mental health at this time. So there's a huge amount of, of work going on in all these different ways, but I cannot thank you enough for what you've all been doing to set up this programme and to make it work in schools and for the young people who've been involved. Um, you're doing incredible work to tackle bullying. It is so important and we must continue to work together to make such a huge difference to the lives of children when we get this right. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been it's a more vision that, uh, that you're giving all your time and really investing uh, your, your time to really listen to the children. And that's what uh, inspired me to, to, to keep doing um, these things. And uh, just thank you for giving your time to event and uh, in the school's program really inspirational because sometimes I know uh, when there's a lot of people that have promised things but with you it's like you really have you really give your time uh, for the kids and that's inspirational thank you thank you Zach you give your time too and you're an inspiration to us yeah, I mean, just to reiterate what Zach says, we are really grateful for you, both for the support that you've given us and for giving up your time to be here and to continue to support young people and what we do. Um, and we now have a panel Q&A session with all of the speakers. And I'm also delighted to say that we have Nicola Murray, Head of Programmes at the Anti-Bullying Alliance, and also Dame Christine Lenahan, who is Director at the National Children's Bureau, where the Anti-Bullying Alliance is based. Um, and I can see that there are loads of questions in the Q&A. So if you have any more, put them in the chat or in the Q&A function. And now Martha Evans, Director of the Anti-Bullying Alliance, is going to put forward some of your questions to the panel. Thank you, Bethan. Um, so we've got quite a few questions here. We'll try and get to as many uh, as that we can. The first one we've got is, um, is to the schools that were involved. If we could ask them what their biggest um, learning was from the All Together programme, please. Um, shall I go first? Um, I think from our perspective, um, it was about getting um, the children themselves to actually lead the programme. So some of the initiatives around anti-bullying week, um, they came up with, they came up with kindness boxes, they invented their own logos, they did um, the flash mob at lunchtime. Um, it was all about them leading it. And it was about our student council, our young carers council, telling us where we should focus. So their voice was really, really important. Yeah, I would absolutely reiterate that. I think one of the most inspirational things that we've seen has been the impact of the programme moving forward. So for our students, it's now not just about recognising and having the skills to be able to recognise bullying, to understand where they can go and who they can speak to. It's about the next steps. Our students are writing their own theatre and education play about bullying and their experiences. They are becoming ambassadors to work with the local community. They, we, they, they're designing their own student mascot. Um, they're just taking part in so much and have just taken such complete ownership over their experiences and wanting now to support other young people within the community and the wider world. It's just been inspirational. Thank you. Um, we've got a question for Peter about what he thinks were the most significant findings for, um, from the programme. Yeah, okay. Um, well, the largest of the, of the ones I show, the largest changes, of course, were coming from the, the schools and the school audit information and the changes the schools have made. But in a way, I'm most impressed by what came from the pupil survey and the pupils themselves. And the changes weren't so huge, but they were real changes as far as we can tell. These decreases in experiences of being a victim and taking part in bullying others. Because um, we know it's very difficult to change these things. Obviously, there have been lots of studies in different countries, 
especially over the last 10, 20 years to tackle bullying. And it, they have modest success. It's a, it's a big job to change this kind of behavior. And I think what we're seeing here is a degree of success, which is being maintained and improved on from time to time, and also how it's um, beneficially affecting those pupils with special educational needs, whom we know are particularly vulnerable to being victimized. And it's so encouraging to see that the effect with them is, is, is particularly marked. So I would, put, I would pick those, that out, I think. Thank you, Peter. Um, we've got a question here for the, from, for the Minister from Lauren. Um, would the government consider rolling out the wellbeing questionnaire to all um, schools on an annual basis so that we know where the children are safe? Lauren, I'll definitely take that away and discuss it with, with my advisors. Um, I, I'm sometimes asked if I should be doing more of a sort of well-being measure within schools. Um, I guess during the pandemic, I've been mostly focusing on trying to make sure that we get support out um, as much as possible, which is why, for example, we did the well-being and education return uh, fund and we've, we've also put in extra support for other vulnerable groups like those from adoptive families, um, the, the family fund that's been there to support families with um, uh, children with special educational needs and th those sorts of measures. Um, and also fundamentally getting schools reopened because uh, reopening schools is so important for young people's mental health and well-being. But um, I, I would I would take take that away um, in terms of going forward with this type of program for the next year. Um, so we're very soon going to announce um, that we're open for procurement, which means that different organisations can can bid in. Um, to be our partners again for the next financial year. And again, um, bids that include a special focus at those sorts of groups of young people who are more likely uh, to experience bullying, um, such as special educational needs and uh, disabilities, LGBTQ groups, and other groups that, that do, do experience high proportions. You know, you know, we would love to hear about those sorts of bids as, as well. Thank you. And we've got a question here about what parliamentarians can be doing to support um, ABA and our work. I wonder if maybe Christine, um, Dame Christine Lenahan and Nicola Murray might want to answer that one. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to give it a go. Um, I'm just um, so amazed by the presentations. It's really, really good. Um, and I suppose for me, it's about making sure bullying stays on the agenda. I think ABA does a brilliant job about making it happen, but I think the really strong message for me from schools was this has got to be a priority. You have got to dedicate resource and time to it. So it's got to matter. And I suppose, Minister, I also see a really interesting link with the work that we're doing in mental health and the work of the SEND review. So it's something for me about making sure that bullying is everyone's business, that mm -hmm. we keep asking questions about it, and actually that we realise just how much it matters and how much it impacts on adult life and young people's attainments. So, you know, across the parliamentary system, I'd be really, really keen if people become advocates for keeping bullying at the centre. So in each new policy, we'll look at how will this impact and what can we do? Yes, and if I can add, there has been a new all-party group established in, in Parliament recently to, to focus on the issue of bullying. And, and Christine is, again, Christine is absolutely right that it links into so many different areas. Um, the, the importance of having a good, robust behaviour policy at school it, it is, is, is fundamental. Uh, and I know the schools minister and the secretary of state are also uh, really passionate about this. The schools minister meets me uh, often to discuss the work we're doing on anti-bullying because, uh, you know, he also so gets that it, it, it's so important um, to work together to tackle this. Thank you, Minister. Um, and just one final question for Nicola. As programme manager, what do you think is the biggest sort of legacy from the Altogether programme? Uh, OK, I, I mean, I think we've heard a lot of that legacy today. You know, we've heard about the impact that it's made, um, which is, you know, what I've been very lucky to hear, I suppose, over the four and a half years of the programme. Um, 
I think I think the legacy is that it shows that there's a huge amount of good practice out there. So there's fantastic things happening in schools that we've been able to kind of gather through the programme and share um, amongst all of the schools and organisations taking part. Um, we're very lucky as the Anti-Bullying Alliance that we have the, the privilege of um, sharing all the work of our member, member organisations as well and putting it out there. So I think the legacy is um, sort of finding a way or showing a way to draw out these elements of good practice and um, incorporate them into a plan that, that suits your school and your setting. And it's kind of given some clear tools and guidance to do that. And I think that will that will have a lasting impact. Thank you, Nicola. And I'm sorry, but we've we've kind of run out of time, but we've, I can see there's lots of questions still in the chat and we'll do our best to answer them as we go along. But I'll hand back over to um, the young people. Thank you. Thank you, Martha. Unfortunately, as, as you said, um, I'm afraid that it is all the time that we've got. Um, but if you do have any burning questions, then please do drop at the Anti-Bullying Alliance an email after the event. Um, I would like to say a huge thank you to all of our speakers and panellists, to everyone who has joined the event so today, and a massive congratulations to all the All Together schools uh, who have participated within the programme. Uh, ABA hope uh, to be able to continue providing home school, uh, whole school anti-bullying approaches that build on the brilliant work done uh, together through uh, all together. Now as evident by everything that has been said here today, uh, bullying is absolutely everyone's business, be it schools, be it parents, be it young people, be it parliamentarians and more. So to end the event we would like to read you a poem that we wrote for Anti-Bullying Week called Change Starts With Us. Thank you. Face to face or through a smartphone, bullying leaves marks and makes people feel alone. To make a real change within society, we must work together, united in solidarity. Schools, change starts with what we need. Support us to take the lead. It does still happen face to face. Help us make a safer space. Influences, change starts with more than popularity. Everyone is different, but we all have similarities. Before that comment, DM or text, think about the repercussions. What will be next? Government. Change starts with research. Think about children when you're on your perch. Use your platform and your responsibility. Support or make a change and prevent hostility. Parents. Change starts with guidance. Talk to us. We don't want silence. Help us to find our way and be there when we need to say. Online platforms. Change starts with protection. We love getting involved but guide our connections. Be clear with us with what you expect and stop the hate that you detect. Finally, young people, change starts with us. It starts with the people we trust. It doesn't matter about followers or likes or the labels you wear or the logo or the price. Change starts with me, then us, them and you. It's up to all of us to see it through. We need to stop, think, rearrange. It's up to us to bring about change. Change starts with us. What a wonderful poem, inspirational um and thank you everyone for joining this event and uh, as we said change starts with all of us uh, we all have a, a role to play and yeah that's it uh thank you everyone for giving up your time and have a nice day goodbye thank you thank you everyone